Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Noman live stream. I'm your host, Adam Hartel, and I'm really excited for the conversation we're going to be having today. In fact, um, if you caught that little reel we showed at the beginning of Noman student art, uh, those last two those last two statements, is your portfolio ready? Well, Noman is now accepting applications. That is the center point of our conversation today. How do I know if I'm ready? Like when I look at a reel like that and I see that incredible student artwork, that would probably make me feel like I'm probably not ready to apply. Um, but that's not the case, guys. Um, this is all artwork by students that the work that they're doing is a result of our program, of the training we offer at our school. And so um, I am super excited to be speaking with uh, Noman's admissions manager, Adrian DeVoe, today. And really what we want to do is we, you know, we've done past streams where it's been more about more of the technical aspects of like this is how to apply to Nomen. this is the kind of stuff we want to see in your portfolio but today is really going to be about getting to those questions that are sort of the underlying questions to things like how do i know if i'm ready often the underlying question is i don't think i'm ready and, I, and that kind of scares me and i'm not sure that i should talk to admissions yet so today what we want to do is we want to address those kind of questions head on we want to dispel some of these myths hopefully encourage you and help you to realize that, you know, really artists share very common questions. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you are in need of closed captioning today for our live stream, that's going to be available on our Facebook live feed. Uh, so you head over to Noman's Facebook page and catch this live stream there. We've got closed captioning for you. Uh, so without any further ado, I would like to uh, introduce our admissions manager, um, Adrian DeVoe. Uh, provides oversight of the our admissions office at Noman. Um, excuse me, I'm just going to move this window over here. There we go. So, providing oversight for our admissions office as well as supporting prospective students and applicants. In fact, I'm sure that some of you watching the stream right now have probably emailed or spoken with Adrian in the past. Um, she ensures those interested in careers in the entertainment industry are aligned for success. And we're talking about alignment for success to get into Noman. Once you get into Noman, we help align you for success in starting a career in the industry, but we also want to help you apply. And that's what today's about. She's a practicing illustrator working in a wide range of media, 
from watercolor and mixed media to digital paintings. Uh, Adrian believes in the importance of practice and continuously studies new creative skills and techniques, giving her insight into Noman's students' desire for knowledge within their chosen craft. Um, and that is, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm really excited to welcome Adrian to the stream. Hi, Adrian. Thanks for joining us today. Hello, good morning or afternoon or wherever we find you today. <laughs> yes, wherever in the known universe that you are watching the stream from. Hello. Um, yeah, thanks so much for I know that you're you know, you're you're constantly working with students and I think the the work of admissions is never really finished because there's always a conversation to be had with students and I really appreciate you taking the time out of that very important process uh, yeah. to join us today. Um, so before we kind of jump into some of these questions, which I'm really excited to address today. Uh, I thought it would be really nice for our viewers just to get know, get to know you a little bit. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your artistic journey and uh, maybe even what you like about, what you enjoy about, you know, working at Noman? Yeah, so I, as you mentioned, come from an illustration background. I got my BFA in illustration at Laguna College of Art and Design. So right out of school, out of high school, I went to college. Um, but kind of did a bunch of different jobs, as I'm sure <laughs> a lot of people have experienced. But I've been working as an artist the whole time. So doing illustration and graphic design. I also like trying out a bunch of new tools. So previous, I worked mainly 2D traditional, watercolor, acrylic. Um, and then I have since transitioned to digital painting, Photoshop, Procreate, all the different tools. Um, and I actually just started learning um, some 3D. So I'm, I'm working nice. on Nomad Sculpt right now because yeah. I interact with a lot of people who are kind of in that same path. So it's, it's fun to try out new tools as well. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about working at Nomad is really helping people who aren't sure if maybe this is what they want to do or maybe this is the first time they've talked about their artwork you know outside of maybe their art class or just their own you know friend circle or their own private sketchbook mm -hmm. so it's really great to be able to talk to people who are just starting out or who are transitioning from maybe a different career path and are looking to see is this the right place for me is this the right time for me and helping them through that process because a lot of places you don't get as much uh, help with that. It's kind of mm -hmm. you're guessing uh, what what they're looking for. And I really like about how that's different here uh, at Noman. Absolutely. And it, I think it's really cool. And a lot of still a lot of people don't realize this, that you know, almost nearly everybody that works at Noman, not just our education team, we're all artists. We're all mm -hmm. creatives, you know, so like just about anybody you talk to at Noman, especially our admissions team, you know, you're talking to a person that is a similar kind of person that you are, you know, taking time on their own to sharpen their creative skills. So I think that's great. Um, and yeah, very cool that you're starting to learn some 3D as well. Yes, it is yeah. daunting. I, I feel your pain out there if you're just yeah. starting out, um, but it's it's great fun. It's awesome. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's, that's also awesome because we get so many students that, uh, you know, kind of get in touch with admissions or that I get to speak to um, at high schools and colleges that are like, well, you know, I love to draw, but like 3D, I don't know, that that seems really scary. So I think it's awesome that you can kind of be not just, you know, representing admissions, but sort of this avatar of like, no, I'm also a 2D artist that's <laughs> that's learning these things. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Cool. Um, well, I'm going to actually get my screen share going up here. There we go. Uh, excellent. So I just I want to jump head on into some of these questions, um, because I think and, and the questions that we're going to ask, I think, will be a great primer um, for taking some time in the chat afterwards as well, uh, just to hear from our, our viewers today. We really want to hear your questions, too. Um, but, you know, kind of the, the center of gravity for our conversation today is really like, am I ready to apply to Noman? And that's sort of the nice way of saying, like, the question I hear a lot is like, am I even good enough? Am I good mm -hmm. enough to apply to Noman? Um, and, you know, that's that's a tough question to answer. Um, and I think, like you said, because the typical college application experience is so different from what we do at Noman, really, no one ever knows if they're good enough when they're setting up an application to an art school. But um, what we want to do at Noman is kind of dispel that fear and then literally give you the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think before we even jump into each of the questions, what what do you want to say to someone that's like let's say they're watching the student reel and they're like oh my gosh i shouldn't even reach out to admissions i i don't have anything that looks like that 
Yeah, I mean, first off, keep in mind that those the, the student reel that you're seeing are people that have been through either a two year program or a four year program. So they're they've used the tools that we've given them in the program to get to that point. So they did definitely did not come in with that level of skill. I I, I would probably imagine, and I've heard this from other alumni that, you know, looking back at the work that they have in their, their final term, their demo reel, looking at what they have now compared to where they started, they have seen leaps and bounds in their, in their personal growth and not just with learning new software, but also their artistic skills. Um, so we are definitely not expecting students to come in at like an expert level of 3D. And like I mentioned before, and, I, and we touched on is People come from different backgrounds, different artistic experience. Maybe they come or are coming right out of high school, or maybe they are doing another program or transferring. So everyone's artwork looks a little bit different, but we are not looking for people to be experts at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I muted my mic because we had a massive airplane flying overhead. Um, <laughs> so let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, I want to raise some sub. I'm going to go right for the jugular right away. Um, okay. and raise some of the things that I hear a lot from students that are kind of like on the edge of whether or not they want to reach out to admissions and even students that have already started the process with admissions. Like these are things going through our minds that are really hard for us to kind of like silence those voices and just move forward. So let's talk about things like imposter syndrome as it relates to putting together a portfolio and working with Nomen admissions. What do you, you want to say about that? Yeah, first off, um, for imposter syndrome, we, as Adam said, we're all artists here, as you said. Um, so we have all struggled with that, that feeling of like, am I good enough? You know, you look at other people's art, it might be better than, you know, in your estimation than, than where you are. So you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm just not good enough. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that you that we all have in the back of our heads at all times. So that's something to 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 learn to get around as far as um, letting that hold you back maybe from asking for help or for sharing your artwork. Um, that's just something that's, you know, it is a personal thing that we're doing and creating art and sharing it. Um, but in this community, it's, it's welcome to share your artwork and, and everyone's kind of in the same boat as far as that goes. Um, so when we, the first step that we usually recommend for admissions is talk to us, tell us about your goals, share some of your artwork, ask us your questions, give us your, you know, your information about you, your artistic journey. Um, and that is just to help us help you in, in applying in being successful in your application or just helping you get more feedback and improve in your own artistic journey. Um, so what we're really asking for right at the beginning is just to, let us get to know you through your artwork, through what you're trying to do. And we're here to help as you know, not to judge you right away. We're here to, to just help you present the best portfolio that you can based on your personal experience. We're not expecting everyone to be the same. So we don't compare students one to one in their portfolios um, during that review session, which comes at the very end of the application. Um, so this, the first step is really get feedback see how, what you personally can do to improve and we are here to help you that whole way so you're not even you're not even in a mode of evaluating their candidacy to get into the school when you have that exactly that first conversation yeah okay. that first conversation like i said is just meant to help you improve and if you're worried about like oh you know maybe i could do better on my artwork this isn't something i'm thinking of including in my portfolio none of that is counted against you or even reviewed you know, during that final review session, this preliminary, let's talk, let's take a look at your artwork is just for the students or the applicants benefit. It's not gonna be part of the final process. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, in, in an effort of keeping things as real as possible, uh, what are some of, could you share some examples of maybe some of the ways that you've seen these issues, things like imposter syndrome and thinking that mm -hmm. they're gonna be judged or compared uh, what are some examples of that you've seen of a way that that can kind of potentially trip up some applicants? Yeah, I, I do see it. Um, 
every now and then where someone, they really don't wanna show you their artwork because they really don't know if they're ready. Um, they're kind of just holding it close and maybe show you just a, an example or two. And then when they go to apply, um, because we do have deadlines so for when you need mm -hmm. to you know, finally submit your portfolio, when they, they apply and, and submit everything right at the deadline, it's a little too late to make any changes. Like there may be just some quick tweaks or presentation you know, rearranging things or, or pushing a piece a little further that would really push it just over the edge. Um, so we do see that. Um, so that's something that if you get in touch with us a few weeks, a few months, maybe before you're thinking of applying, we can continue to work on that just to help give you feedback or yeah, the students, <laughs> applicants feedback uh, to help improve. So doing it sooner rather than later is always going to be helpful. Just you know, if you get into a program, if you ask for help sooner, you, you'll get help sooner. Um, so that's something that's a, a major thing that I wish um, we could have more time with every student for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know a student who's working with admissions right now, and she started that journey when she was still a junior in high school. So she's mm -hmm. looking at like doing that, getting that help and input from you guys for like two years uh, before yeah. graduating from high school. And a benefit of that, too, is that even if you're not sure that Nomen is where you want to be, we'll still give you feedback on your portfolio with just not just our guidelines in mind, but also just recommendations to help the student improve overall. Um, so even yeah. if, you know, that student's looking at a few other art schools or different different uh career paths altogether, mm -hmm. we'll still give them feedback, even if they're not sure they're planning to attend. Yeah. And I think to say it really bluntly, offering portfolio feedback is not a sales tactic at Nova. We, we, that's not the way we think. It's not the way we operate. It really, when we say portfolio coaching, we really do mean coaching, not coaching just to, just to get you to apply to Nova, but it's really coaching to help you grow as an artist. And if that helps you move into applying to Nomen because you're, you're more convinced than ever that this is the right school for you. Awesome. But if that also sort of uncovers this idea of like, well, maybe you're looking for a different type of education. I've heard mm -hmm. that you guys, uh, that you and other advisors will literally, you know, recommend other schools that will help them achieve their goals even better. Definitely. Yeah. Someone, maybe they know they want to do animation. They're not sure if it's 3D animation or 2D animation. And there's a big difference um, just in the tools and, and the, um, you know, the, the difference between the schools that teach that. We focus on 3D entertainment industry, design tools, workflows for that industry. So maybe you find out that, you know, you really love 2D and you want to stick with that. We'll give you some recommendations for schools that do that uh, because, you know, we want to make sure that we're helping students meet their goals and that we're the right place for them to, to help them achieve that. We're not going to strong arm someone into to doing a degree they or a, a program that is not what they want. We want right. to make sure that everyone knows that this is what they want to do so that they can be as, as as successful as possible. Yeah. And that's not just good for the artist. I think that's good. That's good for Nomen too, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like we're just throwing ourselves under the bus. You know, it's like, you know, we want to make sure everybody that gets admitted into our program that they really are in the program that they're going to thrive in. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's move on to another really big subject that comes up a lot, you know, um, I know I have friends and myself included, you know, who are very hardworking artists uh, professionally and people will come up and say, well, you're so talented. Mm -hmm. And this idea of talent and that it's somehow easier or more magical for another person than it is for me to make art. So talk to us about talent and what role do you think talent really plays in getting into Nomen? Yeah. Uh, talent is from what i've seen it's you have an interest in something maybe you're a little bit it comes to you maybe easier than let's say math <laughs> it comes to you a little bit easier art um but the people that you see who are talented are the people who have dedicated time to that so it's not that oh they can sit down in front of a computer and learn 3d software without ever having to take a class you know it's it's putting in the time, the dedication, and the interest to learn it. So talent is not something that is like you either have it or you don't. Um, for 
for our applicants and for students, the feedback that we are giving them is to help them improve. So someone who maybe doesn't know how to get to that point where they see someone who they think is like has an innate talent for that, we can help them connect the dots for, for taking the skill that you have and getting to where you want to be. So talent isn't something that people just have or they don't. It's, it's more of uh, the amount of time you're dedicating to, to learning the tools, to maybe doing the boring stuff like mm -hmm. learning fundamental skills like perspective. That might not be something that's exciting or, or really flashy, but really spending the time on getting those fundamentals down and then having that pave the way for, for you to be more creative and, and have more ability with the tools and, and your own creative work. Uh, so that's, it's, it's not something that like, oh, too bad, you're, you just don't have it. You know, everyone right. can, everyone can do it. It's just like anything else. You know, if you, someone might be, you know, a really good bicyclist, but they still had to learn how to ride a bike at one point. Mm -hmm. Or I think there's natural aptitude and that, mm -hmm. and I think for aptitude without training, without any hard work, it's kind of like the sort of stuff that like friends and family will go, oh, that's good. You're mm -hmm. you're amazing. But the thing that that helps you push deeper into that area where you could be employable as an artist, where you can mm -hmm. you can actually monetize your art and earn money, all that kind of stuff. You have you don't have resilience yet. You've got to have that training and put that time in so that you have both resilience, but also can produce the same results. Exactly. Each time, you know, and that's totally where the schooling comes in. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think talent is this thing that we sort of project all of our anxieties onto because I know like really accomplished artists that will still say like, I go to ArtStation and start browsing through some of the feed on ArtStation and they're like, and I feel like a hack. And it's like, you're not a hack, you're amazing, you know? Yeah, so that, um, that just ties into like that imposter syndrome. Even the person who you say, oh my God, they're so talented, they're a genius. They still look at other people's art and be like, oh yes. man, I could, I could do more, you know? So don't let the like the feeling that you don't have the talent you're just not good at it keep you from from trying and really pushing yourself to do better yeah all right so let's say you know um we've gotten over the hurdle of okay well maybe it's okay if i show some of the art that i don't feel very confident about to admissions and and maybe i've i i've realized now it's not so scary to reach out to admissions and start that conversation but you know how much time is it going to take me to get ready when I get into that process? Yeah, so the short answer is everyone is different. <laughs> everyone has a little bit different background. So it's, it's there's no set number for, you know, oh, it will take three months. You must apply by this time. You know, there's no set number for that. And so the that just loops me back to, to the original point was to share your artwork, even if you're not sure if it's something that that you feel is portfolio worthy, you know, anything you have, you can share with us. And then we can help give you a roadmap to maybe help you prepare, depending on your timeline. We might recommend spending some time, like I mentioned, working on fundamentals to help improve your art. Or if you're like, let's say you're currently in high school and you have the option of taking an art class the next year, you know, maybe we will might recommend take that art class, get familiar with that experience. Um, so everyone is different and there isn't also like a time limit. So if you think, you know, let's say you've graduated from high school, you maybe have some college, maybe you're out there working, it, it's not too late either. Um, so it's not like there is a set time frame where, uh, oh, you missed it, it's too late now. Uh, so we can help you if you're not sure of what, about this question, like how how will I know if I'm ready? We can help you with that that um, that process by giving you feedback, and we'll also give you an honest assessment. Like, yeah, I think you're ready. I think you have a good chance. Um, so we'll also give you that feedback as well. But mm -hmm. everyone is different. Everyone comes from different paths, um, so there isn't a set time limit or time frame. Yeah. What so what if um what if I'm a senior in high school right now? I'm getting ready to graduate. I've got my prospects out there for colleges that, you know, I need to, and I'm applying to. And of course I need to get admitted for the fall because that's when you, that's when people start college. And mm -hmm. um, let's say I'm, no my dream school and I reach out to admissions and 
it just seems like I probably have a little bit more work to do or some things to put together. But hey, I'm graduating now and I have to get in in the fall because that's when you start college. Uh, what do I do if I feel like I need to take more time than I think that I have? Yeah, if you feel like, you know, right out of school, you're just not ready, you don't have enough time to build a portfolio, it's just, you know, a time limit. Um, the good thing about Nomen is that we do have rolling admissions and we have four, I guess, intakes per year. Uh, so we have, um, like I said, four terms, winter, spring, summer, fall. A lot of people apply for the fall just because that's what works out with, you know, their other <laughs> educational timeframes. But if you're not ready, there's no penalty. It's not like you have to wait another year. Um, you could apply for the winter term for the following for the following year, following January. Um, and we students who start the program start at the beginning at any point. So let's say the fall term is is too soon for you. You just need to take a little more time, or you've got other things going on. You want to take some GE courses first or something like that. Um, you can start at the winter term if you're accepted and still start like at term one. So there isn't any problem with with taking more time if you need it. And we recommend that just so that you have a strong chance of being accepted because we want students to succeed. We're not looking to just kind of say, oh, no, it's too late. Goodbye. We will continue working with students until they feel ready to apply and we'll recommend based on their work that we've seen how much time or, or some steps for them to take before they're ready. Um, so there's that that traditional time frame is not yeah. really a concern for us. Yeah, it's it's funny because we're so programmed to think that that's how it has to happen. I mean, in mm -hmm. some schools it is, but it's just not. And it's not like you're yeah, well. What if I don't start in the fall? Well, I feel like I'm behind all my. No, you won't because like you'll have other people just starting with you. Yeah, and there's always yeah. other people starting with you at the same time, and people come from different backgrounds. So you might have more experience to, to meet people who have different educational backgrounds and learn from their experiences too. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a very uh, on your time frame type of, yeah. of availability. And I, I just want to call it out. It's not like the admissions advisors are like whispering in the hallway going, well, it took this person a really ta long time to get ready. So, you know, I mean, they might make it. It's, that's not how we work. Um, I would guess that actually the more time that someone takes to get ready and work with you, that actually helps them, right? Definitely. Um, one of the things that you can anticipate in the program is receiving feedback and completing assignments. Um, so mm -hmm. let's say a student, they're not sure what next steps to take. They're not ready for the fall term. We give them some projects. Hey, why don't you work on this? That might help improve your portfolio. If they take that feedback well and incorporate, you know, some ideas maybe that we've given them, that shows even more that they are ready for a program where they can expect to receive a lot yes. of feedback and get a lot of assignments and have to work on a deadline. And also, it's it's helpful to, to start getting in the practice of giving yourself deadlines. Um, so kind of building that time, taking the time that you have and and working with us and getting feedback and getting critiques, um, that can only help prepare students for the program as well. Yeah, I, and I love that. It's like, it's actually, it gives them more time to show you more about themselves than just mm -hmm. their portfolio, like that they're a good communicator and all the stuff that you said. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Oh, we kind of already hit on this one. I think we kind of did a, did a two for one. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to speak, though, to this question if I'm not quite ready to apply right out of high school? If a student isn't quite ready to apply, but maybe they want to start at Nomen, start taking courses or maybe, you know, work on portfolio development type of, of, of techniques and, and uh, skills right out of high school, we do have options outside of our full time programs, outside of the BFA and the certificate. We have a ton of individual courses. So if someone wants to uh just dive in and take a intro 3d course we have that mm -hmm. if a student is looking to maybe work on 2d fundamentals we have a a series of courses called our foundation in art and design which is designed for portfolio development it starts um starts in with classes like uh drawing from observation perspective figure drawing so all the kind of those foundation level skills mm -hmm. that i mentioned before so you could start at nomen and 
start learning those skills with us, you know, on our campus. And then, you know, while you're working on that, you can also continue to talk to us, send us your homework from class or, you know, any continual um, or personal projects you're working on while you're taking courses. Um, or we might recommend if you're out of state or out of country, we have a ton of resources that are free online resources that we recommend to students based on where they are. Uh, maybe some local art courses are helpful as well. So we can provide more recommendations just by getting to know the student better. Um, so that's just another like, come talk to us, tell us what your yeah. goals are, and we can help you from there. Yeah, and I, I just want to underscore something you said that was really important, this idea of maybe there's, you know, as, let's say you're out of state and, you know, you can't necessarily come to the Noman campus and take the foundation in art design, but this idea of, you know, admissions recommending other things like, hey, mm -hmm. take some time in this. Um, and again, just in the effort of being being blunt, it's like if that's not admissions saying to you, um, you're not ready, don't bother me, go, go, go do this thing over here. It's literally like, this is going to be really helpful to you and i really look forward to seeing how you're going to grow in this course and i want to help you as you go through it oh definitely and we regularly check in on our students and we welcome them to you know even if you started somewhere else or you're learning on your own we we welcome you to send you know email us every day if you want um if you've got a lot of work you want feedback on so uh maybe if you're hearing like maybe you need to take more time that doesn't mean out of luck goodbye you know yeah it means that we see your see the potential and we're giving you tools to help you yes. prepare so that your our program is is pretty uh, fast-paced we want students to be prepared to do well and also to be sure that this is what they want to do so we give them we give students a lot of recommendations to help them on that path as well yeah yeah I just yeah I think as our artists commonly deal with insecurity and I think we always just assume the worst <laughs> about ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so hearing like, hey, you know, I really would like you to take a little bit of extra effort over here to get ready. We, It's so easy to translate that into, oh, so you're telling me I'm not good at Yeah, that so doesn't mean, <laughs> yeah, your artwork could use a little, you know, maybe you work on fundamentals. That doesn't mean I am not good. That means I see that you're working on this. Let me give you tools to, to do better you know to be mm -hmm. to be more successful to help maybe you're stuck on something and you're beating your head against the wall like why is this not working you know just getting another set of eyes on something is super helpful yeah but we all struggle with that it is real <laughs> it's um, mentorship really i mean yeah. what admissions is offering is mentorship and it's funny because i think so many artists out there that are that do have drive they're like i wish somebody could just help me mm -hmm. you know it's like that's what this is you know <laughs> don't don't be afraid of it yeah. um let's see uh, it just, I think, again, we've kind of already brushed up against this question, but um, aside from, you know, going, coming into the foundational course at Noman um, or some of the resources you guys pass on, what are some other ways that students can be thinking about getting ready? Um, one way that, that students, that I recommend to students a lot to start preparing for a program at Noman is to maybe do some industry research because we are such a a niche but it is a big niche there's a, we are a niche in the art education world but the art industry is really big um i'd say start thinking about what you're inspired by maybe what you would like to do in your future career uh we do focus a lot on that in our program it's it's not just kind of art general we're preparing students for careers in this industry mm -hmm. so start thinking about what it is you like. Maybe if you really like playing video games, you know, take a look at what you're looking at and say, oh, I'd love to do, you know, props for games or something, and then start doing some research. What it, What's the studio that made the game that you like? And, you know, what jobs are there? And maybe you can find the artists that work there and look at their work on something like ArtStation. Um, so outside of the preparing your portfolio is also preparing yourself to, to not only be sure that this is what you want to do, but also kind of give yourself a trajectory. Yeah. And that that may change, you know, people's goals and dreams change. You might try a software and you love ZBrush, let's say. So you change to maybe from hard surface modeling to you want to be a character sculptor or something like that. Um, so just start familiarizing yourself with it. Start setting some maybe goals for yourself as far as uh, just loose, like where you want to be 
maybe in the industry? Do you see yourself in games? Do you see you, you want to do a little bit of everything? But just mm -hmm. take some time to think about that and think about your inspirations and 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 where you see yourself. Yeah, and I I think um, if you're if you're thinking like, well, but how do I start that research? I heard a really good piece of advice once, and that was if you if there's a game or a film that you're super inspired by that you're like, if I could help make something like that someday, uh, but I don't know where to get started, go and watch the credits. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to the art department, and particularly the digital artists, there are, observe not just the names of the people who work on the film, but the names of the positions. Mm -hmm. And then go research what those positions are. In fact, then go to LinkedIn and look for studios that are hiring for those positions and then read the job description. Yeah. Like that's perfect way to research. Yeah, there isn't, it's, there's nothing hidden. It's not a mystery. Um, and then also there's tons of resources right now. Like everyone has an art of, if you're really inspired by like Disney, I know they have like an art, you know, behind the scenes for almost everything. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of, of ways to get into that. Okay. So wh what if, what if I'm just like, not, I'm not even there. Like I, I don't even do much drawing and I don't, do much 3D. I'm, I'm creative. I'm really into certain things, but I've just barely done anything. So what do I do if I'm not like good enough to even talk to admissions yet? Still talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, there isn't a point where you need to be ready to talk to admissions. There isn't like, okay, I've completed 10 of my portfolio pieces and okay, now I think I could talk to them. You can talk to us if you've never picked up a pencil, if you've never done anything digitally, that's okay. Um, so if you're even just interested, we're happy to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. As we give you recommendations, as, as you start to create artwork, we can also give you ongoing feedback. Um, so there isn't like a point where you need to reach before you pick up the phone or, or send us an email. Yeah, and I, I love that answer because I think that's one of the things that people get tripped up on the most. It's like, well, I know admissions is available, but I don't want them to like, I don't want to make a bad impression just by reaching out uh, because I don't think I'm ready. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what if I've, like, okay, Noman's a 3D art school. What if I've literally never done any 3D and I'm interested in Noman? Yeah, um, so as taking a step back to our portfolio guidelines, we don't say that you have to have 3D in your portfolio. Really what we're looking for is someone who demonstrates that they are interested in pursuing this field, that they are a creative artistic person. Um, so let's say you've never done 3D, but you're a 2D artist, you feel pretty good about your 2D skills. Probably our first recommendation to you, if we're not giving you feedback on your 2D work, is going to be to go try 3D. Because this is a 3D school, uh, we want to make sure that students are sure that this is what they want to do and not do something different like illustration or graphic design or, or 2D animation, like I was mentioning. Um, that's not to say you have to put it in your portfolio. You don't have to, you know, learn 3D and become an expert in 3D mm -hmm. while you're trying to apply. Um, but we'll we'll probably recommend it and also ask to see it um, because that is a big portion of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. We always recommend free tools or cost-effective tools like Blender is free. There's tons of tutorials for getting started, like Blender Guru on YouTube. And it, there's a great community around that as well. So if you're trying to figure out like, oh, this is so hard to get started, odds are someone in the comments or in a forum has been there as well. And you can um, work through that as uh, with help um, from the community. So it's not required, but we strongly recommend you try it out to make sure that you're sure <laughs> this is what you mm -hmm. want to do. And what, like, what if somebody is just like, okay, even Blender just feels like a bridge too far for me. Like that just freaks me out. What are some other, maybe even less traditional, really low threshold entry points to just kind of like start messing around in 3D? If you are familiar with a lot of different tools, if you've done like a physical 3D thing, like a ceramics class or something where maybe a little bit more uh, like character sculpture, if you like doing that with clay or like Sculpey, that's a good way to start thinking about three dimensions if you're doing that already. Um, there's also other tools um, that may be a little more friendly to a traditional 2D or digital artist, um, like 
Uh, I know there's a, a light version of ZBrush, which is yeah. uh, digital sculpting. There's also like Nomad Sculpt and other uh, sculpting tools that are less expensive than like a full version of ZBrush or mm -hmm. some other tool. Um, so those ones I've heard are more, and and personally, <laughs> I've experienced that too. I've tried both Blender and, and the other yeah. Nomad Sculpt. Um, the sculpting digital tools kind of make more sense intuitively for someone who may be a traditional or digital 2D artist because the way the tools work. Um, so there's different tools you can try out and different ways to try 3D, um, but we would recommend it just because you don't want to get into like, you know, a year into the program and realize you just hate right. 3D, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's better to try it and maybe struggle with it right at the beginning, but also make it through a project and be sure then to just say, oh, I'll learn it when I get there. Um, Cause that might be something you're not sure you want to do. Yeah. And I think even like if, if Blender even feels a little too technical at first, uh, Google SketchUp is a great option too. Oh yeah, I think SketchUp. It's, very, mm -hmm. it's it's like they stripped away all the all the technical bells and whistles and just like this just make box modeling. Um, yeah, and I see yeah. a lot of two D artists use that as their entry point to mm -hmm. you know set up an environment or a room and they use SketchUp to kind of lay out the perspective and get everything right and then do a digital paint over that. So yeah. that's another great method if you want to show that transition or kind of incorporate it into something you feel is more portfolio worthy yeah. as a as a 2d artist that transitioned into adding on like 3d skill sets like blender and stuff like that i will say that like in the beginning it feels super technical but mm -hmm. the first time you get to see a render of something that you worked on even if it's really simple as someone who has painted it just like blew my mind mm -hmm. to see just that like render, being it's able amazing. to like move a camera oh it's oh, yeah. totally different it's so cool <laughs> yeah absolutely um okay yeah. So next question is, uh, what is, let's say I've been spending a lot of time learning things like Blender and, and I do a lot of 3D stuff, but I don't really draw. I don't know any of that mm -hmm. kind of 2D stuff. Yeah, so that is something that may seem, if you're very familiar with 3D and if you're really comfortable with that, you might be like, why do I need to do 2D? You know, you're recommending me I do this or do I need to show this? And the reason that we recommend it is there there are 2D courses in, in the BFA program and some in the certificate program as well. But those fundamental skills you learn uh, in 2D are very beneficial to your 3D art. So it will help your 3D art be more, maybe more creative, like you're more able to capture like the vision that you have for the final piece. Um, and also it's, it's helpful for getting ideas across. So learning those fundamentals in 2D, um, and by fundamentals, I mean like figure drawing, perspective, drawing from observation is helpful for, for your future 3D practice. But if you're feeling like, oh, I've never done this, I feel like I'm way out of my depth in this, I wish I could just model the thing and move the camera around, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of the same advice that I'd give to that person is it may seem out of your comfort zone, but we're, the reason we're, we're asking you to do it or it's we recommend it is that it is it is beneficial. Um, yeah. So for that, I'd recommend and again, you don't have to be an expert in 2D if you feel really strong in 3D, just like if you do a lot of 2D, we're not expecting you to be an expert in 3D. Um, if you're doing a lot of 3D, you're going to 2D, focus on really basic stuff like like, per, like I was really saying perspective. So draw a box, make sure the perspective looks correct. You know, start, start with really simple things. Don't try to get really complicated right away. Um, so keeping it basic, keeping it um, focused on those fundamentals will really help. And um, I'm not sure if this is the next question, but we do ask to see that if a, some, a student shows us entirely 3D work, um, but we do ask to see 2D because we want students to also be prepared for their 2D courses. So yeah. kind of just priming students for what to expect in the program and to be successful in the program. That's why we recommend 2D and also 3D for those yeah. 2D people. And um, I think both those last two questions um, that we had the slides for, because uh, I've had, I've literally had this conversation uh, with students out there is like, you know, um, 
I do a lot of 3D admissions, ask me to explore some simple studies in 2D and to execute those and then to put them in my application portfolio. And they're kind of freaking out because they're like, you just asked me to put something in my portfolio that shows that I am just a beginner at this thing. Won't that mm -hmm. hurt? Won't that hurt my chances at getting in? Um, what, what do you have to say about that? Definitely not. Um, they won't hurt your chances. And like I said, we're asking for it for a reason. It's not just to like, haha, you're not good at everything. You know, <laughs> we want to see that you're willing to push yourself maybe out of your comfort zone, that you're willing to take on new challenges, um, that you're prepared for a program where you will be asked to do things that you've never done before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, new software, new 2D tools and techniques. Um, so this, even if it's not your best work, we, the advisor, can speak to the review board on your behalf and say, you know, no, we asked the student to provide this to show that they're ready. So that shows that you take feedback, that you can to do something that is out of your wheelhouse yes. um, and that you're willing to to do assignments and to 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 include that. Uh, so it's only meant to help you. It's not going to count against you. And we can continue giving you feedback on your 2D artwork as well. If you have all 3D and you have one 2D thing, we'll, we'll help you pick maybe what is your strongest 2D piece. Yes. And all the more reason to spend more time helping admissions get to know you. So that mm -hmm. you can you can parse that like you can parse that out for them. Say, yeah, we know this isn't their strongest piece, but we love the fact that they put it in here because of X, Y, Z. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, uh, and I think because you and I had a, a great conversation about this um, off camera, and um, I don't know what it is, but I, I I tend to think that most of us, myself included, uh, before I worked at Noman. Um, we, you look at a school like Noma and you go, okay, these guys are training some of the industry's top talent. They have an insanely high um, uh, career placement rate for their graduates. Look at their student work. It's through the roof. It's amazing. I, I feel like the assumption sometimes that gets made is, well, they're not, you know, they have, you know, people are coming out of the woodwork to apply to them. And there's gazillions of people always wanting to go to Noman. And, and so they're kind of like looking for a reason to thin the herd. And like, they're looking mm. for a reason to not let you in, you know? Um, whereas I know that's not the case. You're looking for whatever reason you can find to help students succeed. Um, mm -hmm. is, and, and I know I kind of belabor the point, but like, is there anything that you want to say about that to help people understand that, you know, admissions is not out to get them or not out to just prove a point as to why you're not looking for an excuse to not admit them into the program. Um, Correct. Yeah. Can you, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. So we, if a student isn't accepted, it's because the review board may think that they're not prepared for the program. So really what we're trying to do in giving feedback and recommendations and maybe taking, you know, hey, you may want to take some more time to refine these pieces. So what we're really trying to do is to prepare them for the program. So we want students to be successful. Um, like I mentioned, if you've never done 2D, try 3D to make sure that you will be successful in this program. This is what you want. Um, so we're not trying to like find a reason to deny someone. We're actually really trying to look for reasons to accept people. So mm -hmm. if maybe you're not, you're, if in our opinion, you may be need to take some more time or, or at show more range in your portfolio or include something that is missing. Um, we're really recommending that because we know that that's what the review board would want to see um, to to help you be successful yeah. and to potentially be accepted. So we're not comparing students one to one. There's no ranking system for like, oh, sorry, one the person right before you was better than you. You know, they're not uh -huh. compared against each other. Um, so really, students are taken on one and one and and reviewed on their readiness for the program itself. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Uh, I saw uh, I saw a question come up in the chat earlier in the stream that dealt with the age of students at Noman. You know, mm. uh, so if I'm if I, I mean let's say I'm even post college and I've already I'm out there and you know I'm I'm of a higher age than your typical college student. How old is kind of too old to to like take time at Noman and study your programs? Yeah, there's no top age limit, there's no too old <laughs> to study. Um, really, the only age requirement is that you're 18 or over. 
by the time your program starts. There's even some flexibility with that for program students within the first term. Um, so really there isn't like a, oh, sorry, you're too old. This is only a program for 18 to 22 year olds or something. Uh, we do see a lot of range and a lot mm -hmm. of diversity in our students. Um, we see students who are fresh out of high school who are applying as high school seniors. Um, we see a lot of students who have you know, some college experience, maybe they went to a community college, so they might potentially be transferring in, you know, GE courses into the BFA program. We also see students who have degrees already, maybe an mm -hmm. art degree, so they're looking to treat Noman as like a finishing school um, with our certificate program. We also have students who have degrees in totally different fields. Um, so as far as, you know, maybe they went to school for uh, you know, to be a doctor and it wasn't mm -hmm. what they wanted and they decided to change change career paths. So we do see a lot of that as well. And we also have students from not just here in California, but from all over the country and also yeah. internationally. So we do get a wide range of students with different educational backgrounds, different, you know, environmental backgrounds. Um, we also have a lot of diversity in our in our students as far as um, uh, we have a lot more female students are applying now before, you know, previously you kind of think, oh, it's, you know, there's a bunch of guys maybe <laughs> that were going before, but we do see a lot of diversity um, mm -hmm. in in gender and, and, and self-expression at the school as well. Um, so there is a lot of different type of people coming from different backgrounds. But one of the great things about Noman is that because we are a niche kind of school where our students are preparing for the 3D entertainment industry, even though people come from different backgrounds, um, a lot of students are working towards the same goals. So they have common interests. Um, it's a really collaborative, um, supportive kind of environment. Um, it's not competitive like, you know, oh, that person's the top of the class and everyone else, you know, forget it. It's not going to happen. You know, a lot of students are really, they, they ask each other for help. They give each other feedback. We have a very um, active community. So it's a great place just for wherever you are in life, um, because there's probably someone else who has similar experience, similar interests, um, similar backgrounds, or you can bring something new to the table that maybe that, you know, you can meet new people for them with totally yeah. different backgrounds as well. I love that. And it's, it's so true. It's one of the things I love about being on campus is you see people who come from totally different locations and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. but they're all just nerding out together because they're all oh, yeah. sort of fueled by the same <laughs> the same passion it's great yeah um, yeah no people often and i'll you know if you think that you're too old to get involved with art um talk to me seriously like you know uh you can <laughs> you can you could you could find me <laughs> by uh by calling them or whatever I'm, I'm happy to talk to people i'm happy to answer emails but i mean i didn't start like really seriously studying art skills for the entertainment industry until age 40. Okay. Now I just told everybody that I'm older than that and I'm okay with that. Um, but it, it's so true. And I think every industry artist you talk to will say age is far less relevant than the drive to train and to learn the skills. Um, mm -hmm. 100%. Um, we've got a few questions that, and, and I know that my colleague, uh, one of our admissions advisors, Xander, who's been in the, in the chats with you guys, uh, he's been like, furiously typing and answering admissions related questions. So thank you for that. Um, he's passed a few along uh, in here to us. So I'm gonna bring those up. Let's see here. Okay. Um, yeah, if somebody, if somebody's just curious to know um, if, if someone is really just very strictly interested in 2D animation specifically, is not interested in learning 3D animation, uh, what are some of the, uh, what are some of the schools that you tend to recommend for that? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of schools in the area. Um, so if you're looking at like Southern California, um, some of the other schools that have other um, more 2D related programs are like CalArts, Art Center, um, the school I went to down Laguna Beach, LCAD. Um, so the other art schools um, have more broad curriculum available. Um, so you can look and see if they have like 2D programs or or other um, animation outside of 3D animation. Mm -hmm. uh, another question that came in is, uh, I recently graduated from art college, but not really sure what to do next. Are mm -hmm. there courses or sessions uh, for advice 
for that subject and more. Like kind of post a post grad student who's still not entirely sure where they want to go next, and no, you know what Noman trains artists for could be a potential direction. Uh, what would you recommend? Yeah, I would say um, again, send us your work. That will help us give you recommendations based on where you are right now, um, and we can have a conversation. If you want to reach out to admissions, we can have a conversation about maybe your goals, your past experience, what you studied at your previous school. Um, we have, I think it's somewhere around 80 or more individual courses, uh, maybe 70 around there. Um, so we have both 2D individual courses and 3D. Most of it's going to be 3D. Um, so if you're not sure, we can start talking about your goals and then maybe recommend a class and a level that, that mm -hmm. can help you get closer to what you're trying to do. Yeah, and so. uh, I'll, I'll be sharing about all this kind of stuff after we finish our conversation with Adrian. I'm going to be giving a brief presentation about all of Noman's programs. Uh, but I would say, you know, if you're interest, if you're interested in taking a little bit more time for like uh, post grad uh, studies or like high, higher education type study, Noman does have a, a two year certificate program mm -hmm. that is designed for someone who already has an art degree but wants to really double down and take a program to prepare mm -hmm. to work as a 3D artist um, in the industry. And I'll, I'll I'll say a lot more about that program uh, later mm -hmm. in the conversation. Um, let's see another question. Uh, what if what if I have 2D and 3D computer animation experience, but no drawing experience? Now we kind of unpacked that one a little bit earlier, but anything you want to add there specifically for yeah. animators? I would say if you're doing anything character related, what we're going to recommend is figure drawing, um, gesture drawing, anything like that. Um, so you may be more comfortable doing it in kind of in the animation scope. So, so focusing on that, but if you're animating people, characters, creatures, having a good understanding of animal drawing, figure drawing, anatomy will only help make your animations more dynamic or you, you could push things further. Um, so we'd probably recommend that. Um, and again, it's kind of what we talked about before. Don't be worried if you're not good at it right away. Um, any work that you do, you'll see exponential growth. Mm -hmm. And I'd see that we had an additional question that came in about recommendations for someone finishing college and looking for what to what to zero in the study. I would definitely refer back to what Adrian said earlier about, mm -hmm. you know, e even if you're not looking for a degree, if you already have a degree, no man admissions mm -hmm. is available to you because we have a wide array of options. And seriously, a lot of industry artists already working in top studios come back to no man for mm -hmm. individual classes. Yeah. Uh, so there are a lot of options that are there and you can fully engage admissions with those types of questions as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Uh, how much group work happens in the courses? Uh, like uh, how much percentage of the time do you participate mm -hmm. in the form of group projects at Noman? To my knowledge, it's mostly individual work uh, because the 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 point of the classes is to help you prepare for the career. So you're going to be learning a little bit of everything, depending on which program and if you're taking individual courses. But let's say you're looking at the BFA program. It is a 3D generalist curriculum, so you'll learn a bit of everything. Um, there are occasionally uh, some projects where uh, students work together, like one student might be doing the modeling and texturing for the character and someone else is or you know, there's a they're doing an animation. Someone's doing the rigging, and someone else is doing the animation. So that's the potential as well. But generally, we prepare the students for um, to learn a wide array of that skill on their own. Yeah, I think I've I've seen that more of the collaborative projects come a little bit later in the program. Mm -hmm. Like when they're working on something for their demo reel, they might collaborate on exactly. something bigger. Um, all of that being said, uh, the cool thing about the environment in which you're doing it is all nine of our digital labs are open from nine o'clock in the morning until one o'clock <laughs> that night mm -hmm. like one o'clock in the morning uh and they're like they're amazing they're they're an inspiring awesome environment to be in the lighting the decor everything but all of the workstations are industry standard hardware and software so all that being said is uh you might have students working on an individual project but they're doing it shoulder to shoulder with their peers in the lab mm -hmm. and so often i'll i'll walk by the labs and i'll see students working on their own projects, but then they're like looking over each other's shoulders and they're like giving yeah. advice or like, how did you get that one thing done? So it's a lot more like working in a studio because that's exactly. the way that it works in the studio. So while, while you might be working on some really intensive individual projects for each of your classes, 
you will get to have that sense of collaboration um, in the labs, 100%. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. Uh, another question that came in is, how does the experience differ from a more traditional college campus experience? Yeah, so it is pretty different. Um, our campus is set up, like, like Adam was saying, is set up more like a studio than a traditional college campus. Our class sizes are pretty small. The maximum is 18 students, but it's usually around like 12 to 15. So there's no like giant lecture hall where it's like 100 students to one teacher and good luck getting help. Um, so we have a lot of, um, the teachers have a lot of availability to give feedback. Um, we also have a lot of resources for students to ask for help outside of class, like an academic mentoring center. Um, so if you just need help above and beyond your classwork, that's something you could use at any time for, for program students. And also, um, we're in the heart of Hollywood. Um, so we're surrounded by, you know, different studios. There's tons of museums and restaurants and, and cafes and different things. So So the environment is much more like what you would expect, you know, potentially in your future career um, and is a lot more conducive to, um, like you were saying, Adam, um, to that collaboration. So asking for help with, from, you know, the, your friend or your classmate who's sitting right next to you. Um, so it is different in that way, um, but we still have, you know, the same uh, level of support uh, for our yeah, students as a traditional totally. campus. And I think what some of the really cool non-traditional things are like, okay, yeah, Noman doesn't have a football team. <laughs> and we and we don't have a winter formal or like what I don't know what, what colleges do in that regard. I'm talking about yeah, school. I don't know what they do um, now. <laughs> but but what we do have is like we're all we're all nerds in a yeah. big way. And so you a, a lot of the extracurricular activities are like uh, an instructor in your I don't know your whatever class is like oh yeah I just finished you know a little movie working on a little movie uh, you know I don't know Justice League or or I, I worked on Dune or like whatever it is and they're like why don't we go watch it together as an extracurricular mm -hmm. thing? So you get to go to the movies and all the students get together and go out and see that movie, but they're watching it from the point of view of like, it's cool, but also we're learning how to do this We're stuff. You're learning it. Yeah. yeah. And that's um, another I've... great point. Yeah. Is that the teachers are industry professionals. So they're bringing real world experience They're It's not like they taught, you know, they, they did one project 20 years ago. Um, right. They all have, are bringing, current tools, techniques, they're talking about their current projects they're working on. Um, so it's even more of like an inside, a step closer to, yeah. to that studio experience. Yeah, and, and, and I think there we put a lot of, um, we, give a, we give a lot of input to a, a, like from the student council at Noman as well. So like if you're on the mm -hmm. student council, we really do listen to our council and want them to tell us like, what are the things that they feel like will make Noman better? What are the activities mm -hmm. that students really want to see? So uh, there are different cl clubs that come and go depending on the base of interest of the students. I mean, I I walked on I walked into our green screen stage one day on campus, and literally the entire stage room it was taken over with long tables of like all Noman students playing Dungeons and Dragons, and I was like, mm -hmm. this is the coolest place in the world, you know. Yeah. Um, so you get to see some really cool and particular, particularly nerdy, you know, student activities crop up. Um, yeah, but campus. it's cool. Nobody's gonna like say you're too. <laughs> just, I haven't seen anyone be too nerdy yet. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, not if, a thing. If anything, <laughs> if anything, I I'll talk to alumni and they're like, yeah, I was like that one oddball in my high school that like I don't know whatever oddball in their high school meant, and they're like, and I was mm -hmm. like way too into certain things, and they're like, and I you know I was a little nervous going to know them, and you know, and then I realized, oh, they're all they're all like me. Like I'm okay. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that's like you said. There's no one that's too nerdy at Noman. It's a safe mm -hmm. space and a creative space. Um, well, that I think that takes care of the majority of our questions. I know that Xander was like, so many admissions related questions came in that Xander was able to take care of those in the chat. Um, but uh, any any parting words that you want to share with our viewers? I mean, this is your chance as you know admissions manager to basically just say, here we are. Uh, what, what would you like to encourage our viewers to do? Yeah, I would just the main takeaway that I'd like like people to have is that admit our the admissions department and we the admissions advisors are really here to help you and to advocate for you as far as um, you know providing those next steps and answering any of your questions. Um, there's no question that's like oh maybe I should figure this out on my own. Like if there's something that you think 
you know, you're not sure who to ask or where to find it, we're the people that can help you with that. And if it's something that we don't know, we'll find that information for you. Um, so really, the best thing that you can do if you're considering applying, if you'd like information about individual courses or the full time programs, just reach out to us um, and we can help. You know, we'll start that conversation. We can get on a phone call. Um, we're starting to do in person tours again. So just reach out, <laughs> take that first step. I know that that first step might seem like, Ugh, I don't know if I'm ready, but you don't have to be at any certain point of readiness. You don't even have to show us work to get started. Um, we do recommend that you do because that'll just help us even more. But we're really here to help you. We want you to succeed and we want you to feel um, comfortable and like knowledgeable through the process so that you're not kind of guessing or really hesitant. Um, we just want you to feel like you have support and that's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's it. You said it <laughs> very well said. Um, and I hope that anybody out there who's interested really does take that to heart. Um, you know, we, we are looking to help you. Um, and you got to spend an hour with Adrian, which is great because now you know that admissions is super nice and awesome and cool. <laughs> um, so Adrian, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, and uh, I, as we say good farewell to you for now, um, I'm going to get ready to share about a 15 minute presentation. If anybody that wants to stick around in the stream and learn about careers in the entertainment industry and get a little bit more nitty gritty into Norman's offerings and courses and stuff like that. But Adrian, thanks. Have a great weekend. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see you next week. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye. All right, guys. Um, so I'm just going to get my screen share up and running here. Um, and thanks again for all of the awesome questions, everyone. I'm, I'm really happy to see the questions that are coming in. And um, it sounds like we've got a lot of um, interested people out there. So I'd like to let you know just a little bit about Nomen, you know, like our origin story and the types of careers we're preparing artists for. So oh, jump past that. Thank you. Um, so Nomen got started back in 1997. This was like two years after the original Jurassic Park film came out. Why is that important? That film, although it wasn't the first film using CG, it really helped to set the benchmark for realistic CG in live action. Um, and what happened was after that film dropped, suddenly all of the studios wanted to create the same kind of content. But the challenge was there was only a handful of artists in the entire world that could do that and knew how to make those things. So um, our founder, Alex Alvarez, who's an industry artist himself, has worked on some amazing projects. Uh, he was working with the company, Alias Wavefront, who, who was, were the makers uh, of Maya. Um, and uh, he decided that he would open up a lab where industry artists could come and learn Maya and start to learn how to make this stuff. And it happened to be, there happened to be such a demand and it was just the right time that um, we very rapidly blew up into being a full-blown schools. You know, now with nine digital labs and a green screen stage and like all this amazing stuff, uh, VR labs. Um, and really that's because we started within the industry as a place that was serving the industry. And we continue to serve the industry, not just by training industry artists, our classrooms do have phenomenal industry artists in them, but now we are really about getting ahead of the curve and training the next generation of industry artists. And we constantly stay ahead of and on that curve, uh, both technologically, whether it's a lot of the stuff that we've been developing in Unreal Engine now, as well as making sure that the artists, whether they're in high school or whether they're even a 30 something out there working in a career already that really wants to do this, can find us, can get access to us and can learn the skills that are necessary for them to start their career. Um, so we've been around for over 25 years. In fact, actually this year is our 25th anniversary, which is amazing. Um, and uh, you can see that we've won some fantastic awards of the years. I won't take the time to jump in all that, but I just want to let you know, we have been around for a quarter of a century and we are very good at what we do. Um, and because of that, our graduates work on awesome projects. So this is just a sampling of, of some you know, fairly recent projects that Nomen alumni have contributed to. There is a vast, vast, you know, higher amount of projects out there that you would recognize that they've worked on. Um, and then these are, you know, the studios that you're probably familiar with. These are some of the bigger names out there that regularly hire Nomen graduates to come and work in their pipelines. Um, it's important to note that, you know, it's not just these studios, but there are well over 800 studios in the Los Angeles area alone, which is why our school is based here. Um, you know, sometimes 
coming, moving, you know, out of state into LA, finding a part that can be really challenging, but it's all for a purpose. And that is our graduates wind up finishing the program very close geographically to where these studios are hiring. And all of our instructors who are industry artists are able to literally just travel from their day job into an evening class in Nomen and teach students how to do what they do every day in films and games. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning as we're talking about studios is I said earlier that Nomen has an incredibly high placement rate, um, and we do. Uh, we have always maintained a placement rate uh, with, within you know more than a decade of a very high 90th percentile. So you can see even in 2020, which was a very challenging year, um, and you know at the beginning of 2020 when we had a lot of graduates finishing the program and there was a pause on this and the entertainment industry was kind of regrouping as to how they wanted to handle things, still 94% of our graduates uh, that year found their first job in studio doing exactly what they trained for at Nomen within only six months of finishing our program. Um, that's really important. Um, and that is really the mission that drives everything we do and is the reason why we do things the way that we do at Nomen. We want to graduate artists that go and work into the industry. We want to supply the industry with the best artists. Um, we have well over 50 studios that come and visit our campus every year, four times a year, just to look at Nomen student artwork. Um, that's something we call our employer preview day. And it's a great opportunity for our students to line up you know, those, those interviews and those relationships and those interests and positions from studios that they're going to be pursuing as they finish the program. Um, moving forward, I want to mention, uh, you know, we talked about Nomen as a niche school. We're like a very, very, very focused slice of, of, of learning art. So what is that niche, essentially? It's called digital production. Um, this is an industry sort of catch-all term that is really talking about these types of skills, things like computer-based visual effects, uh, character and creature design, digital sculpting, and then character and creature animation, environment design, whether that's for films or games, lighting and rendering, matte painting, compositing, game asset creation, uh, working with game engines, for example, like Unreal Engine, production workflows, and world building. And all of those skills translate into these jobs. These, every one of these titles that you see on the screen, these are the types of titles that you're going to see in a film credit for, for digital artists. And each one of these is a career path unto itself. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of different kinds of jobs. And the, there are jobs that involve different types of skills and interests. So there's room in you know, digital production in the entertainment industry for many different kinds of artists. And so I want to highlight a few of those for you really quickly. Uh, by starting out with character artists. A character artist is essentially the person that makes the 3D version of the, the character or the creature that is going to be appearing on screen in a game or in a film. So this artist, as you can see, they've got the, con the uh, concept sketch in the upper left-hand corner that they're, work they're looking at, um, but that's just a two-dimensional sketch. That's just an impression of of, of the design elements in this, in this creature. This artist has to essentially make it real make it a believable, real, physical creature. Um, so if you're interested, if you like to draw characters and creatures and you're really interested in making them, but um, you also are interested in 3D and would love to have had a hand in the actual thing that shows up on screen, um, this could be an awesome career path for you. Uh, this artist is sculpting digitally in a piece of software called ZBrush. Um, and if you're not familiar with ZBrush, it is the industry standard. Um, and a fantastic uh, piece of software for using traditional sculpting techniques with 3D digital clay. Uh, and as Adrian mentioned, it's also, it tends to be for 3D, it tends to have a, be very intuitive uh, once you learn how to use the software. It's very intuitive for people who like to draw then to essentially start creating something in three dimensions. Uh, next up are effects artists. Effects artists, um, I like to affectionately say that effects artists get to sit in front of their computers all day and blow things up. Um, that's a really crude way of describing the job, but they are making stuff like this. So they're not the artist that spent perhaps months and months modeling that space station that you saw blow up, but they take they take that hard, you know, hard earned, uh, challengingly built model, and then the director is like, we need to obliterate this thing and make it look cool, <laughs> and that's what these artists do. Uh, so this is 3D animation, but it's incredibly complex. 
uh, as you can see, there's billions and billions of you know droplets of water and moving pieces and a lot going on. So instead of animating each piece by hand, like you say you would animate for a character, uh, these artists need to um, use real world physics simulations. So using specialized software that drives uh, computations and uh, simulations of stuff like smoke and fire and water and and velocity and force and mass and, and all that kind of stuff, material properties and how they're going to break up. So uh, they're basically taking the elemental forces of, you know, of, of the universe as we know it, and they're manipulating it into really compelling, cool sequences and images. So I like to say that if, you know, digital artists were members of a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, uh, the effects artists would probably be the wizard and the sorcerer. So if that's interesting to you. That literally could be your entire job. Um, coming up next, and this takes us to the very end of the digital production pipeline, are compositors. Um, compositing is essentially like if you've ever taken your phone and you know, or, or a camera and filmed something in front of a green screen and then put a different background in, we do it on Zoom all the time now. That is really super, super simplified compositing. You're adding digital content into other content. Um, so compositors for the digital production pipeline are making really amazing set extensions and scenes like this. Uh, so the, everything you're seeing from the background of the buildings and objects in the foreground are 3D models. Then, you know, texturing artists and lighting artists make it look real. Um, but the compositor is the person that brings all of those elements together and, and assembles it into a scene and adds the actors that were shot in front of a green screen to create something that looks really believable. Um, so, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this could have been filmed on a location. They would have had to have found a location that looks exactly like that. Um, they would have had to make sure that the weather was cooperating with them and they had the permits and insurance necessary to film on that location, as well as the film crew and the actors. Um, but instead, uh, the director can save a lot of time and money by going to a, a VFX studio and saying, hey, these are the shots I need um, and I want your, you know, your 3D wizards to put that together. And that's essentially what a compositor does, brings all the elements together into a scene. Uh, the last example that we're going to look at is uh, previs artists. Now, where the compositor was at the very end of the pipeline, they, get, they receive all of, the, all of the polished and finished um, pieces of a scene, they put it together. Previs artists are at the very beginning of the pipeline. Um, so uh, previs artist essentially makes a moving storyboard uh, for a cinematic. Uh, where a storyboard is typically hand-drawn 2D uh, sequential images, kind of like a comic book, that are supposed to explain how a scene is going to look, how the camera is going to move, uh, the movement of the objects in the scene, and so forth. Now, uh, 3D artists are doing that uh, like this. They're essentially making a, they're making the movie before they make the movie. Um, so they're using simpler models, simpler forms of animation, because really they're sketching out the big picture. These are artists that uh, enjoy working in 3D and animation, but rather than spending you know, months or, or even a year on just one scene, they get to work closely with the director and the cinematographer and uh, create this. And so if that's you, if you're like, I wanna work in 3D and I do wanna animate, but I'm a big picture thinker and I wanna tell the whole story. And I think directors, I, I think what directors do are amazing. And I love cinematography. I kind of wanna work in that world. This is literally that niche. Um, and this could be um, a job for you moving forward. All right. So having shared examples of the kinds of careers that Noman trains artists for, I want to talk to you about how we're going about training them. Uh, these are our academic offerings at Noman. So in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see our Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. That's, uh, that's you know, our full-on four-year degree program uh, that uh, Adrian was talking about and so forth. Uh, just to the right of it on the top row is our certificate program which is, I had mentioned, is a little bit more advanced. It's a little bit more akin to a master's level of study uh, for, for artists that may already have a degree or already have a, a very strong foundation in 2D and just want to get in there and get two years of training. Um, and then on the bottom row, you'll see first our foundation in art and design. Uh, the foundation is what Adrian was mentioning earlier. That is a one-year course designed to help students prepare a portfolio to come to know and These are foundational um, art skill classes, things like uh, figure drawing and anatomy for artists, as well as perspective and color and light theory, and then some awesome uh, design classes like character design, creature design, how to design vehicles and mechs and props and environments. Um, so 
The foundation does not require a portfolio application. Only our two full-time programs in the top row do. Uh, and then the individual courses that we offer do not even uh, require uh, an admissions process. This is These are just classes that you can register for online. These are uh, more than 70 classes that are available, that are part of our full-time programs, but they enable you to come in and just take one accredited class in a particular area of interest that you want to train in. So a lot of different options to pursue education at Nelman. Um, first up, a little more information about our four-year degree. This is a fully accredited Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, which means that financial aid and all the other things that come with that um, are going to be available as you apply. It is a full-time program physically located on the Noman campus in Hollywood. Um, and we have two optional concentrations in either game art, so like working within game engines, and VFX, which brings some more advanced visual effects uh, classes into that full-time program. It's not required that you only pick one of those two concentrations. Those are just two options to go on a little bit more concentrated path. Um, but you also get to, in your last four terms, pick out four electives that let you build up skill in a particular area that you're interested in. Um, now that comes after having spent time learning the whole pipeline. So the way that we construct our curriculum at Nomen for our full-time programs is we don't only just teach you the stuff for the job that you want to have going into studio after graduation. And that might, why would we do that? That might seem counterintuitive. Like, why would I spend time learning stuff that I'm not going to be doing? Well, chances are you will be doing it in some form or a fashion. And more importantly, if you want to work in a professional studio, having knowledge and experience with the entire digital production pipeline is what makes you, uh, it's really the secret sauce that makes studios want to hire our graduates. They will not have to train them in the pipeline. They will not have to educate them in extra areas. They might be getting an animator or a character artist, but they know that that artist understands everything that comes before and after them in the process, which makes them an invaluable team player. Uh, so we take the time to teach the entire pipeline. Then you get to either pick a couple of concentrations or pick out extra electives that lets you build up those extra skills. It's great that that comes later in the program because then you know that you really are choosing the thing that you know that you like because you've had exposure to all of them. Um, also worth saying, which Adrian mentioned, is a rolling admission, which you uh, you know you don't have to start only in the fall. You can start our program in the fall, the winter, the spring, and the summer. And um, uh, we have graduates that typically will finish this in not four years, but three, because they'll choose to stay on for the summer term each year, which allows them to get the whole program done in just three years. And that's the way the majority of them do that. If you prefer to take summers off, you can com you complete the course in or the program in more of a traditional four year uh, type program. So it's entirely up to you. Uh, moving forward, I'd like to mention our two year certificate briefly. Uh, I like to say that the two year certificate, because it's more advanced and it's more intense, is a little bit like the Navy SEALs training program <laughs> at Noman. Uh, it's designed for uh, applicants who already have a very strong art foundation. Um, most likely from an art school that they already attended. Maybe they already have a college degree. So not looking for a degree, but they want to get that specialized training that's going to launch them uh, into a career in digital production. So this also is a fully accredited full-time program. It's on our campus, and you're, you're essentially uh, jumping right into uh, 3D training, and you get to choose one of five areas of study, ranging from things like uh, working within game engines or uh, doing modeling and texturing, uh, or perhaps animation or VFX and so forth. Um, this is designed to, to start in right away by building all the foundational 3D skills and then letting you, when you pick one of those five areas, really double down in that area and build up all the skills to be ready to work in the industry and do all of that within just two years. Um, so it is a bit of a heavier course load and so forth, but it's a great option for uh, students that um, may already have a degree and are looking for just that specialized training to add on top of the foundation of education that they've already had. Next up is our foundation in art and design. As I mentioned, it's a one-year course that gets you into some really awesome foundational art classes. No portfolio uh, application is required. It's just something that you enroll in through talking with our admissions advisors. Uh, though it is a one-year course, it's not required for you to stay in it for the entire year. It's designed for you to get in and get the classes that you need to build up the foundational skill sets you need and round out your portfolio before applying to Nomen. 
this isn't required. Um, if you are going to use, port, you're going to you know make an application to Gnome and read a portfolio, but it's a great option perhaps for some high school students coming straight out of high school that maybe not have had the opportunity to take some of those foundational art classes while they were in school. Um, so it's a great way to get that um, and to build up a great portfolio and really be building your portfolio, learning from instructors at Nomad. So you get to really make sure that you're getting the input that you need while working with admissions. All right. And lastly, I'll just mention that well over 70 of the classes that are part of all these, these programs and courses that I'm talking about are also available as individual classes. We have a limited number of individual classes that are also available online. You can definitely inquire with our admissions advisors about that. Um, if you are, maybe you are working on your associate's degree in community college and you want to pick up an extra class in this area, whether it's just something you want to study or you want to get a taste of what Nomen is like, um, or even want to get some classes out of the way before transferring to Nomen, individual classes are a great option uh, to do that. All right. So we already really covered, you know, what I can say about admissions and Adrian, of course, uh, being our admissions manager, did a, did a brilliant job of it. But I will just stress at the end of the presentation here, the first step and the most important step is to speak with an admissions advisor. Um, we've got a fantastic admissions team at Noman. Um, each one of our admissions advisors is able to do everything that Adrian outlined. Uh, they're all artists themselves. And um, the only thing that you need <laughs> to qualify yourself to reach out to them and get that conversation going is if you are just interested in Nomen, if you have questions. Uh, they do not require a certain level of art experience, a certain number of art pieces to begin with. They will start with you wherever you are at, um, and they really are that most important lifeline that you can build um, before applying to Nomen. Uh, so I can't stress that enough. My colleague Xander has already shared a link in the chat uh, for a just a contact card that you could fill out if you would like one of our advisors to reach out to you to get that conversation going. So um, we're not going to use that information, by the way, you know, to do anything other than help our admissions team get in touch with you. Um, you will uh, that'll start off by you receiving an email from them. Uh, I would suggest that if you have filled up that card, that you keep your eyes on your spam folder in your email, just in case your email server goes. I don't know what Nomen is. Let's let's stick it over here. Uh, because that ha has happened from time to time, and we want to make sure that you get that really important email. Um, of course, you can always call Nomen. Um, it's easy to look us up, you know, on our website, uh, nomen.edu. Find the phone number. You're more than welcome to call if you prefer to do it that way and ask to speak with admissions um, or, you know, ask that admissions reach out to you. Really, bottom line is we're available to you. If you are interested in what we're training artists for, we want to make sure that you're getting what you need to take your next steps. Uh, so please utilize that uh, moving forward. And uh, just wrapping up the stream today, guys, uh, we've got an amazing campus and we're so happy to, to be having that campus open again. Um, and uh, our labs are up and running and, and available and so forth. Um, if you are interested in seeing the Noman campus, you also can reach out to Noman Admissions uh, and inquire about uh, coming to our campus to take a tour and see the labs and so forth. Um, obviously, with uh, COVID restrictions and protocols, which are still in place, there's going to be a few extra hoops to jump through, but we do want to help you do that if you're interested. Um, so as I sign off today, guys, I'll just say, uh, please follow us on social media if you haven't already. We have been ramping up our streaming content with some incredible uh, regular live streams, including, um, you know, uh, Archetype with... Uh, uh, industry veteran Josh Herman, who's been uh, creating 3D characters in ZBrush and then putting them into Unreal Engine and rendering them, making some really epic scenes. And honestly, that stream is a great education in character design in general. Um, we also have Creature Corner on Tuesday evenings with Jared Krzyzewski. I do believe this next Tuesday coming up, we are going to have special guest Jared Morantz. Jared is an incredibly accomplished and fantastic uh, concept artist who works in 3D. And he's just a treat, any chance you get to hear from him. So I definitely encourage you to tune into that. Um, also, we have um, Noman instructors, uh, Miguel and Tran. Miguel or Ortega is, uh, both of them really, are insanely talented and very, very accomplished industry artists. And they are taking us through their process of actually creating a short film in Unreal Engine. So all that to say, guys, some amazing events coming up. Uh, I'm getting ready to uh, do some interviews with some incredible industry artists including people like Ian McKaig, Carla Ortiz, uh, uh, Santa Monica studio artists, uh, Rafael Grissetti, 
and Della Longfish. Uh, this is going to be part of a series called The Artist's Journey, where we're going to be getting to know these artists, but also really kind of like how we've done today, delving into some of those really common questions and concerns that artists face and hearing what these very successful artists have to say about those things. So please do come back, uh, tune in again. All the information about upcoming streams is available on social media. Um, or if you subscribe to the Noma newsletter, we'll get it to you that way. But in the meantime, have a great weekend, everybody. Continue to stay safe. Keep creative. Keep pursuing your creative passions. Um, and uh, keep, keep growing and learning. And we'll see you back here again soon. Thank you very much.